Amid the rapid technological maelstrom of World War II, cutting-edge aircraft in 1939 found themselves obsolete by 1942, as the aviation industry churned out ever more fearsome and sophisticated warbirds. Early trailblazers, like the unique-looking Handley Page Hampton, taking to the skies and the conflict's unpredictable and hazardous early days, faced immense challenges, often leaning on what swiftly became dated technology amidst the war's relentless pace. Yet, even when thrust into combat scenarios far beyond its original design parameters, the Hampton stood as a testament to resilience and adaptability. It etched its name in history by executing the first daring nighttime bombing runs deep into German territory, sorties often viewed at the time as journeys with no return. While its modest armor and limited bomb capacity were evident drawbacks, the valiant pilots of this pioneering bomber leveraged its commendable speed, agility, and range. They daringly ventured further than any other Allied aircraft of the time, taking the fight straight to Germany's core in some of the most dangerous and spectacular nighttime raids of World War II. During the 1930s, the Royal Air Force couldn't foresee the daunting challenges British pilots would encounter within the coming decade. In 1932, the Air Ministry released Specification B-932, calling for a twin-engine day bomber that would outperform all its predecessors. Handley Page responded with an audacious design that quickly won the Air Ministry's endorsement, primarily because it struck an ideal balance between range, payload, and speed. While the British authorities anticipated a groundbreaking aircraft that would propel the RAF to the forefront of combat aviation, they were blindsided when the outcome was nearing obsolescence by its maiden voyage. By early 1936, the inaugural prototype, the HP-52, sporting serial number K4240, turned heads. It boasted a sleeker design compared to its contemporaries, hinting at unmatched speed and agility. Upon seeing the aircraft's slender yet deep fuselage just three feet across, C.G. Gray, founder of the Aeroplane magazine, quipped, quote, It looks like a flying suitcase, a moniker that forever clung to the aircraft. In August 1936, buoyed by the successful test flights of the K-4240, the Air Ministry greenlit an initial production run, commissioning 180 units in line with specification B-3036. At the same time, an order for another 100 aircraft, powered by the Napier Dagger engine, went to Belfast short in Harland. Early 1937 saw the completion of a second prototype, the L-7271, which distinguished itself with features like a more contoured ventral defensive gun stance and a tweaked nose. The L-4032, a subsequent prototype fitted with the Pegasus 18 engines, came into the picture with a redesigned nose featuring an optically flat bomb aiming panel and revamped ventral and dorsal gun positions. On June 24, 1938, L-4032 was ceremonially named by Lady Catherine Mary Montague Douglas Scott, Viscountess Hampton, at Radlett Aerodrome, coinciding with its inaugural flight. In her address, Viscountess Hampton invoked, quote, the spirit of John Hampton, the defender of civil liberties, to embolden the aircraft's future crews. By the close of 1938, production blueprints for the Hampton crystallized. Apart from Handley Page's assembly line, English Electric in Preston, Lancashire would also churn out units, and a dedicated Canadian facility would augment the production. Within a few years, a staggering 1,430 units rolled off the assembly lines, making it one of the UK's most prolific bombers when World War II erupted. As the freshly minted bomber began joining RAF squadrons worldwide, pilots hailed it as a reliable and efficient warbird, marking a significant leap in the evolution of British bomber designs. The wing architecture was particularly groundbreaking for its era. It endowed the bomber with capabilities previously uncharted in British aviation. Instead of a monolithic structure, the wings were an intricate assemblage of three primary components, the center section, the port outer wing, and the starboard outer wing. Each segment had further subdivisions, a testament to the meticulous design. Each wing's foundational strength is derived from a main girder spar, ensuring structural resilience. This was augmented by a leading and trailing edge section, the latter being pivotal to the aircraft's aerodynamics. Moreover, the wings integrated hydraulically actuated trailing edge flaps. These flaps, paired with the ailerons, were reinforced with robust D-spars. Aviation author Philip J. R. Moyes asserted that the wing's design wasn't merely for aesthetics, but was an aerodynamic coup. 
The pronounced taper of the wings, combined with their design focus on minimizing drag, endowed the Hampton with an impressive top speed of 265 miles per hour, a staggering pace for its time. Yet, even with such speed, the aircraft maintained a commendable landing speed of 73 miles per hour. However, speed, safety, and elegance did not equate to comfort. The Hampton's slender fuselage was a tight squeeze, designed to fit only one person across. The navigator was positioned right behind the pilot, and accessing the cockpit required folding the seats down. Once inside, movement was virtually non-existent, making extended missions a test of endurance. This close confinement led to a slew of nicknames for the Hampton, such as the Flying Suitcase, Panhandle, and Flying Tadpole. British airman Wilfred John Mike Lewis recounted his experience, quote, I did my first flight and first tour on Hamptons. A beautiful aeroplane to fly, terrible to fly in. Cramped, no heat, no facilities where you could believe yourself. You got in there and you were stuck there. The aeroplane was like a fighter. It was only three feet wide on the outside of the fuselage, and the pilot was a very busy person. In a twist of fate, the flying suitcase was soon selected for the longest and most dangerous aerial mission of the war until then, a bombing raid on the heart of Germany. With the eruption of war in 1939, Hamptons were first tasked with armed aerial reconnaissance missions, keeping tabs on German naval movements during daylight hours. This proved catastrophic. Despite its commendable speed and agility, the Hampton was hopelessly outmatched by the modern Luftwaffe fighters, which outpaced the British bombers at nearly every turn. By December 1939, a somber bomber command conceded that relying on the Hampton for daylight operations was unrealistic. This admission stung, especially since the Hampton was conceived as a daytime bomber. Nearly a year after its deployment, the aircraft seemed on the brink of redundancy. The scarcity of capable bombers was acutely felt after France's capitulation. Britain found itself exposed. The Germans now occupied vast swaths of territory just a stone's throw across the English Channel, and the Allies lacked the means to even contemplate striking back at Germany. Adding insult to injury, the Luftwaffe initiated a relentless bombing campaign against Britain. British civilians confronted the grim specter of war on their doorsteps for the first time, leading to a precipitous drop in morale. The RAF needed to counteract decisively, demonstrating their capability to penetrate the heart of Germany and project aerial might undeterred. However, Berlin lay nearly 600 miles distant, a seemingly insurmountable stretch for contemporary warplanes. Moreover, reaching Germany's epicenter meant traversing miles upon miles of fortified enemy airspace. In 1939, when combatant nations still sought to honor President Franklin D. Roosevelt's plea to confine air raids to military objectives, the British were further constrained. They had to mount their raids during daylight to minimize civilian casualties, yet this made their bombers tantalizing prey for Luftwaffe interceptors. But the paradigm shifted dramatically post-May 14, 1940, in the aftermath of the Luftwaffe's relentless bombing of Rotterdam. The British discarded daytime raids in favor of audacious nighttime incursions into German territory. It was up to the flying suitcase to reinvent itself as an unparalleled nocturnal bomber. It had the range and the speed to do it, if not intercepted by the Luftwaffe. The onus was on this aircraft to showcase to the world that Britain, too, could strike at the very heart of the enemy. On March 19, 1940, Hampton spearheaded the first nighttime assault on German soil targeting the seaplane hangars in Hernham Silt. The British aviators, eager to deliver retribution to Germany's doorstep, were all too aware of the monumental risks ahead. Navigating the hostile expanse, pilots grappled with a gauntlet of perils. The skies buzzed with the incessant menace of anti-aircraft fire or flak, a rain of lethal shrapnel that could instantly maim or annihilate their bombers. Then, there was the ever-looming threat of the Luftwaffe, armed with cutting-edge aircraft and elite fighter pilots. But it wasn't just enemy combatants that posed the threat. The unforgiving weather, often obscuring vision and impeding aircraft performance, multiplied the hazards of collisions or veering off course. Nighttime operations, with their inherent limited visibility, were particularly treacherous. The inky, lightless terrains below offered scant reference points, and the era's primitive navigation systems weren't always up to the task. Yet, 
perhaps the heaviest cross to bear, was the immense psychological burden. The ceaseless tension of piercing enemy lines, the hours spent in the confining belly of the flying suitcase, and the harrowing sight of fellow airmen plummeting from the skies. Each mission was a profound test of their mettle. Still, amid these hellish conditions, British pilots showcased their indomitable spirit, determined to fulfill their duty. By August 1940, the Hampton raids on Germany had become a grim routine, with casualty rates remaining alarmingly high. On the night of August 12, 1940, 11 Hamptons were dispatched to destroy the old aqueduct that bridged the canal over the River Ems, just north of Munster. Among those leading the sortie was Flight Lieutenant Roderick Leroy, piloting Hampton P-4403 EAM. His crew consisted of pilot Officer John Lewis, Sergeant Walter Ellis, and leading aircraftman William Rich as gunner. That night, the skies were rife with peril. The relentless barrage of flak seemed omnipresent, turning the firmament into a nightmarish gauntlet. By the time they reached their target, enemy fire had already claimed two Hamptons, while two others were limping away, severely damaged. Yet for British airmen like Leroy, such adversity was all in a day's work. Leroy steered his flying suitcase with unwavering resolve through a maelstrom of searchlights and enemy fire. Risking it all, he descended to a hair-raising altitude of just 150 feet, speeding towards the target. At this daringly low height, Leroy released his explosive payload, igniting a series of blasts that came dangerously close to his own aircraft. Before he could even complete his bombing run, enemy fire wreaked havoc on the Hampton, disabling its hydraulic system and rendering the wing flaps and undercarriage inoperative. Though the wing was grievously damaged, a silver lining remained. The fuel tanks were unscathed. Unyielding, Leroy persisted until every bomb was deployed. The beleaguered Hampton then mustered enough strength to retreat from the inferno and limp toward English shores. Approaching the home base, with dawn yet to break, Leroy realized the peril of attempting a nighttime landing in their compromised state. Not willing to risk his crew's lives after they had just escaped the jaws of hell, he orbited the base until daybreak, ensuring a safe landing without a single injury to his crew or further detriment to the Hampton. Leroy was honored with the Victoria Cross on September 9, 1940, for his unparalleled bravery and leadership. By then, he'd been relieved from active duty and promoted to a substantive flight lieutenant. Countless awe-inspiring endeavors akin to Leroy's heroics were carried out in the early war days by the unsung yet indomitable Handley Page Hampton. Though the Hampton was outpaced by advanced German adversaries, its grit was instrumental to the Royal Navy during the tumultuous initial months of conflict. While it was eventually succeeded by more advanced four-engine bombers like the Short Sterling and Avro Lancaster, the Hampton carved its niche in history. It stood as the herald of Allied resistance, reaching deep into German territory to deliver retribution.